So I went through the popularity scale from you are an evil, wretched human being to do this to your meat-loving brother to you are amazing, you're going to save his life and everything in between. So thank you for that balance. Um, I found them very funny. And I always love comments because they reveal very little about the person being commented on and they reveal quite a bit about the commenter. So that was fun for me to see all of you vegetable phobes start coming out of the woodwork. Um, there's a lot of beet haters out there. Can't even imagine. Welcome back. My name is Corinne Phillips and this is Fresh Pea Cooks. So a bunch of you guys have written in and you have a ton of questions and I'm so delighted. So I thought that a question and answer uh, video was in order. Now, just as a preface, when I wrote this diet, for my brother, a way to get him off of his processed and, and high meat and carb diet and integrate more plant foods into his diet. I'm not infusing my food beliefs onto my brother. I simply wanted to simplify his diet in a way that allowed him to taste, to smell, and to feel different. From that different place, then hopefully integrating delicious fruit and vegetable dishes that he loves. Things that aren't so robust in flavor, but more subtle, crunchier, fresher, and healthier. So that was my plan. And the protocol that I developed was developed for him specifically. I had no idea there would be hundreds of you joining us. So yay, I'm so delighted that this resonated, that so many of you wanted to integrate more whole foods, more plant-based foods into your diet. This is not a vegan lifestyle channel. I am not a vegan. I'm not even a vegetarian. I eschew labels. I feel that they're very confining. They're very dogmatic. Um, but I have studied nutrition over the course of my life and the longest lived healthiest populations eat a diet high in fruits and vegetables and get the bulk of their protein met through uh, legumes, beans, nuts, and the plants that they eat. So I don't like to bog down in the dogmatism. I often say that I'm a vegetarian because that most easily encompasses how I eat. Um, I'm not technically a vegetarian and I don't eat meat. I don't buy it. I don't fix it. Uh, I live with a carnivore and it's, it's just never been a problem. So for me at home, my diet is plant-based and it's primarily um, fruits, vegetables, nuts, legumes. I do some grains. But because Cody's diet has been so heavy on wheat and so reliant on grains, I took those out. I don't believe that they're bad for you. I believe that we should experiment with our diets and know how we respond to certain foods. Take out dairy for a month. How does your body respond? Take out wheat for a month. How does your body respond? Take out sugar, preferably for more than a month because sugar is evil stuff um, metabolically. How does your body respond? And it's, these are questions that I can't answer. These are questions that only you can answer. So the fact that so many of you guys are doing this is so encouraging and I'm so inspired by that. So thank you for sharing and joining us. And um, I'm putting together the week two um, protocol, diet, whatever you call it. Uh, I'm putting in some recipes and Basically, it's anything that is a whole food. If you don't want to cut out grains or you're not interested in cutting out grains, add in whole grains by all means. If you want to stay vegan and raw or you want to do just fruits, vegetables, and nuts, continue on that. If your body is really craving like some warm kind of cooked food, I continually post recipes on my Facebook page. So those are there. I have a playlist in YouTube called Conscious Eating. Those recipes are available for you. And I have a ton of resources on my Facebook page under Notes tab. One thing that I neglected to um, highlight or emphasize was water. 
you need to drink a lot of water. When you're cutting out processed food and you're cutting out fast food and you're cutting out all sorts of artificial foods, refined foods, your body is going to go into kind of a, a detox shock a bit. I had really bad zits for like the first four days of this, so my face is starting to clear up. Um, and so it's just interesting for me. I talked to Cody and Mrs. W. And the last three days, you know, mild headache. Yesterday just didn't feel super good. And they said, drink tons of water. And the rule of thumb is one ounce per every two pounds of body weight. For those of you lucky enough to be on the metric system, you'll have to um, look that up, whatever one ounce converts to. So that's a rule of thumb. And what you want to do is just allow your liver and your kidneys to flush your body as best as they can. And that means being hydrated. So water, water, water for all of you joining us. And even for those of you who aren't joining us, it's really important. So I've gotten a whole bunch of questions. Um, this one comes from Tangi Wheat. And she left this question um, on my Facebook page. She said, would you do a video on things that a family on a teeny tiny food budget can do more fresh, nutrient dense foods? We don't have a juicer, but we do have a Nutribullet. Can't wait to see more. I'm a coffee drinker and I'm going to try the green tea. She goes on to talk about their diet is heavy in starch, things like rice, beans, and commodity foods that will stretch far and feed a family for relatively little. So to supplement that, the best way that I know how is to look for ethnic grocery stores. If you have a Mexican or Latino market anywhere near you, if you have any sort of Asian markets, I know a lot of you have like Amish or Mennonite or even Mormon um, markets where they sell food inexpensively in bulk. A lot of these ethnic grocery stores are heavy on fruits and vegetables. And some of them, like the Asian markets, you can go in and find these beautiful vegetables that you've never even seen of or you've never even heard of. And you look at it and you have no idea what to do with it, but it looks gorgeous. Ask, ask one of the produce people, ask anybody in the market if anybody's standing there or they're picking some up as you're, you're looking at it ask them how they prepare it. It's the best way to learn about other cultures, having dialogue, and to share with people that actually have grown up with these foods. And a lot of the foods are just really common stuff. You go here, we have um, the Guadalajara market, and I can go in there and I can get all my chilies, bananas, papayas, limes, um, cactus patties, cilantro, um, what else, oranges, any sort of fresh or seasonal fruit. They, they rarely have items that are out of season, unless it's staples like tomatoes, cilantro, stuff for salsa. But Mexico pretty much produces those year round. So they're almost always in season. Sometimes they're better than others. I hope that helps you. Um, buying in bulk is a huge cost savings. And I've done videos on how I buy, I buy wholesale and I split it with a couple friends. And so what we do um, is I pick up an order once every couple months and I only buy my staples there. I don't buy any perishables and I just store them in food grade bins. It's way cheaper to buy that way. It's more expensive up front, but then you have months worth of food that you can pull from um, should you need to. There are resources out there for you. You just have to do a little digging around. And if you can get a few friends together, you guys could start a co-op too. So a lot of times you can buy in bulk. Um, you just have to get crafty. I know there's a, a website here in out, out of Dufer, Oregon, actually, just very near us. And it's called Azure Standard, A-Z-U-R-E. And it's a buying group. And they deliver to, I think, Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho, maybe Montana, maybe, um, I don't even know if they go how far into the Midwest they go, but they have a really like wide range and they drop off once a month. They have drop stations, you meet the driver there and you get a buy in wholesale. So there are resources out there, you just have to look around. Stu in Tokyo writes, 
made my first almond milk today. It's delicious. I used almonds and dates as well as a teaspoon of vanilla. It's much better than the expensive $10 a liter stuff I find here in Tokyo. Not to mention the local stuff was produced in Spain and then shipped to Japan. And who knows what's in the package stuff. It took me all of 10 minutes to make. And then he goes on. Yay, Stu, Domo, I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. Um, yeah, almond milk is a breeze and Almonds are getting more expensive because of the drought in California. California raises like, I don't know, 80% of the world's almonds. Um, but you can make coconut milk. You can make cashew milk. You can make hazelnut milk. You can make pecan milk. Any kind of nut that you want. Um, dried coconut, those big chips, make delicious milk. The ratio depends. It's about a cup of coconut flakes to three to four cups of water, depending on how um, rich you want it. And it's really simple. Blend it up in the blender, run it through a nut bag or um, even just a piece of, a couple pieces of cheesecloth. You want a few layers because you don't want all that fiber in there. Um, an old piece of like a pillowcase, the corner would be perfect. So strain out the pulp and, and that's it. You got your, you got your almond milk. Tom Legrady writes, any comments on which juicers are better and why? Why should I spend five times as much on an angel or three times as much on a Vitamix? As somebody who makes her living cooking and somebody that uses both of these appliances daily, um, I likened it to being a carpenter and buying Black & Decker tools. Now there's nothing per se wrong with Black & Decker tools for the homeowner, for the occasional user. And we have some in our tool chest. But if you're a professional carpenter, you are not going to buy Black & Decker tools because you will just be throwing your money away because they will end up in the landfill within a month's time, two months time. So I'm hard on equipment, I'm hard on appliances, I put them to the test, I use them multiple times a day. And so for me, quality matters. Um, my consideration with the juicer, I went and watched a bunch of YouTube videos where they compared. You take a kilo of carrots and you run them through various juicers and you see how much pulp is remains and how much juice you got from that kilo. And the results are astounding, they're staggeringly different. The angel juicer, which is what I have, um, was about 40% more efficient than the juicer that I had. So I was throwing 40% of my fruits and vegetables away in the pulp. So for me, financially, it took a few years for me to realize, you know, this is hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year, and I could just buy the expensive juicer because it's really expensive. Um, but recover that cost up front and not have that waste bleed out over the course of several years. But that is my cost analysis. That might not make sense and it might not financially be available to other people. So many of you um, have had written in saying that you have slow juicers. I know Huron makes one and there's another one and it, the name escapes me. They have a really nice compact countertop upright shape um, so they're space saving, they're lightweight, and people seem to really like these. And there's some of them, um, they get really great reviews and they're 300 bucks, 350 bucks. So that is an option. And as far as blenders, um, I would not, I would never personally buy anything that wasn't Blendtec or uh, Vitamix just because I've had both, I enjoy both. I think both are great. They do what I, I need them to do. Um, but more importantly, they last. And for me, you know, I might break a blender within a few months. These things will last me five or six years, and that's heavy use. So um, Blendtec's customer service is really bad, and the one time that my blender broke, they wanted to charge me like $350 to repair it. Um, I've had several things on the Vitamix go bad, mainly the canister itself, and um, they've replaced it free of charge, no questions asked. The warranty, I send a picture, they send me a new one. So um, I'm pretty much a Vitamix fan just for that, but performance-wise, they're both great.
But again, that's, you know, that's a $300, $350 blender. So many of you have written in, say you have a Nutribullet or you have um, the Nutribullet and then there's another one, Magic Bullet. Um, and people love them. They're smaller capacity, but really powerful motors. And I was looking at Costco the other day, and I think they had a Nutra Bullet with all of these different attachments, and it was 60 bucks or something like that. So really affordable. SGJ for AJ under the outtake video writes, I fully understand these types of diet and eat, in eating healthy. This is fantastic and the benefits can truly add to one's health. See, I am one who is trying to be self-sustained. We have a garden, we do a lot of canning and freezing. Yes, we eat meat in limited quantities, beef, poultry, pork, fish. A lot of what you picked up is exotic fruits and vegetables. Trying to be self-sustaining, we're trying to keep everything local, either things we can grow or get the farm at the local farmer's stand or purchase. Also located here in Western Oregon. Something to consider for a future series, something that could show us some of the healthiest foods that you can acquire locally and also be able to store for the long term and use through the winter. Yes, we grow all types of things, green beans, corn, a wide variety of squash, onions, garlic, tomatoes, apples, cherries, plums, grapes, blackberries, marionberries, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, all on our property. We can try, we try to can, freeze, and juice all of it, but putting together into a more healthier mix is mind boggling to me. Okay, done rambling here. That was a beautiful ramble. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, um, I also have a garden and grow almost all of the fresh food that we eat during the summer. Um, and what I don't grow, my local farmers, Mariah at Casa Verde CSA, Dan Thal at Hood River Organics, some other local farmers um, I do support. So I really understand this and it speaks to my heart as well. We went to Costco, we live in Oregon, first of all, so nothing grows. We live in a 7B, but it's pretty much winter with snow on the ground. I think Cody and Mrs. W are like, three or four, zone three or four. So they're significantly colder. Um, so they're ripping out their kitchen. And again, I wrote this diet for him. They wanted something they could both do that they didn't really have to cook. He wanted to lose some weight. So it was just like a multi-prong um, um, solution, I guess, for what they were facing in their life. So yes, ideally doing a fruit cleanse in the middle of winter when you have to buy apples out of storage or you have to have them flown from New Zealand and we're buying pineapples from Hawaii or Mexico. Um, that's not, it's not ideal. So yes, I think all of those things are so important to consider. And I have been a jam maker forever. I'm not somebody that eats sugar, so I eat only enough to just test and taste the jams and then I give them away. But this last summer, I only made a couple different jams. I didn't do, you know, 70 kinds like I usually do. And I'm also looking for healthier ways to dry and preserve and ferment the produce that I do grow in my garden to last longer than just the summer and fall season. So um, all of those videos, preserving and things like that, I'm wildly into and I'm really excited about and I've done a fair amount of them. Um, you'll find them on my channel. So I'm gonna keep that in mind because that's really um, a glorious request and I really appreciate that. So thank you. Three Ville Three Livis commented under my Woman Cave video you have what looks like a small library, but why are there no books in your Amazon store? Yeah, I've put hundreds of them on there. Um, I have included nearly all of my favorite cookbooks, not the ones that are marginally, but just like the really exceptional ones. And I've done it by region. And then gardening books, my favorite ones are there. I haven't done any philosophy and I don't do novels and that sort of thing. Um, just because it's, it's just so much upkeep and I had to draw a line somewhere. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Amazon stores, many creators and many bloggers are doing this now. It's a really great way to put all your favorite things in one place. 
like my favorite brand of olive oil, some of my favorite teas, my favorite mustard, tahini, my kitchenware, this stuff, teapots, juicers, you name it, it's all there. And so anytime I get something new or something that I really love, I add it to the Amazon store. So these are all products that I either want to have or do have and use on a regular basis. And we get a small percentage that's not passed on to you guys. It's taken out of profits by Amazon. And you guys get to see what we use. So for some of us creators, it's a, it's a significant portion of the money we make from um, doing and putting together videos. So it's a really great way that you guys can support us and we get to do more of what we love to do and um, hopefully you enjoy it. So thank you for that. That's, that's over there. And I have one more question. Flannel Acres writes, I wanted to try something like this for a while, but it seems like too much of a hassle because I also have to prepare meals for my husband and kids. I would be willing, I would be following your videos on this though, because I find it really interesting. Question for you, would lacto-fermented vegetables be a good snack option for a meal plan like this? I've got dilly carrots and peppers fermenting as we speak. Yes, yes, yes. I did not include any pickles or anything lacto-fermented because Cody is a pickle phobe. So, um, but wonderful, 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 wonderful. What a great way to give your body probiotic and take care of your cravings and snackiness um, in a beautifully healthy way. So yes, pickles are wonderful. And not just the vinegar pickles that you go buy in the store, but these ones that you actually, um, you ferment yourself um, are exceptional. So thank you for your questions. I hope this helps. I hope this gives you guys a little more idea. I wanted the diet to be really flexible for him, um, but certainly I didn't anticipate hundreds of you also doing it. So if you have any questions, if you're struggling, um, just... Think about whole foods. This is this something that you could plant, you could pick, you could eat that isn't, hasn't been um, processed, manufactured through a plant of some sort? Like if it is a plant, eat it. If it's been produced in a plant, maybe no. So thank you for being here. And I'll see you guys in my next video.